Hello and welcome back. This is Candace from Candoodle and I'm back on the Possum Stamps YouTube channel with this super cute pull tab card with some of the new release. So let's get started. So I'm starting out with the So Many Candles stamp set, which is super cute and birthday themed. And this stamp set is free with any purchase of $75 or more from the Possum Stamps shop up until June 7th. So make sure to check that out while supplies last. So I'm going to take the cake from this stamp set and I'm going to stamp it onto some 110 pound white cardstock. And then I decided I wanted to use that along with some of my picture pals, which is another really adorable stamp set. And I decided I wanted to use the llama, so I stamped that down as well after I stamped my cake down. And then we are going to move on to the Copic coloring. So for the cake, I used some E markers. I have E50, E30, and E21, and I just added some shading uh, to each of the tiers of the cake. I wanted this to be like a simple vanilla cake with some chocolate frosting. So you'll see in a second, I am going to use uh, some of my darker E colors to color the tops of the cake to make it look like chocolate. And I like to start with my lightest color to get a base coat down and then go in with my second darkest to my lightest and then add my darkest and go back out to my lightest again. I always thought that I could just do one layer of Copics and that would be fine. I was scared to put down more ink, but a lot of the people that I watch and the really great Copic artists out there always say to put down more ink and it really does make a difference. You can see when I color my first layer of the second tier, how it compares to the bottom tier with the two layers of color. So definitely if your coloring isn't looking good, I would suggest putting down another layer of ink. And I find that gives me room to leave room for my highlights as well because I am a bit heavy handed. So then I came in and just added some gray to those middle little stripes to make it look like it had vanilla cream on the inside. And then I colored my little alpaca in some tea Copic colors to make him look kind of gray, but a neutral color. And that is it for my Copic coloring. So off screen, I did die cut those out. And I also cut an extra piece to go behind the llama to make him um, a little bit more sturdy. So now I have a piece of white cardstock and it is three and three quarters by five inches and I cut a pull tab notch at the top and then I'm going to ink blend that. I used salvage patina and peacock feathers around the outside to give it a bit of a halo glow and as you can see I did a lot of work uh, on that to get the blend that I wanted and then I'm just coming in with some water and my distress sprayer to add some splotches and then I'm also coming in with some silver paint and just a paintbrush and flicking that on to give some extra glitz and glitter details in the background and as you can see my splat box is quite messy so then I took one of these dies this is from lawn fawn slide on over and I just cut a little channel behind the cake because this is what our llama is going to slide through so I added my piece to the back of him to make him a bit more sturdy and then I'm just planning out where he's going to slide to I took two pieces of rectangle cardstock and glued them together to form my pull tab and then I'm going to attach a foam square and make sure that everything is lined up well and he's in the right spot and then I'm going to pull that off gently that way I can add some really solid liquid adhesive um, to make sure that he stays put. So then once I had him in the right spot, I took the cake and I just traced where that was going to be because I wanted to put some foam tape down beside him to make sure that he was going to stay nice in the channel and my cake was popped up on top so the little llama had some room to hide down below. And there we have our pull tab slider. Off camera, I did take some plain white cardstock and just make a little sleeve and that's going to hold the pull tab on the back and make it slide up and down without kind of deviating side to side. And then I just finished it off at the top there um, with the little arrow, which I also blended in Peacock Feathers ink. So now I'm going to add some fun foam at the back here to give it some extra lift. As you can see, I did that off camera and that's going to make it easier for the recipient to pull that little pull tab. Once that was done, I decided I needed a sentiment and I really wanted it to be white heat embossed. So I took a bit of a chance and I used the happy birthday. And first I was very careful to stamp it down on tracing paper to see if I liked the placement. I didn't, so I moved it to where I did like. And then I peeled that stamp off and realigned it again. That way it was going to be in the perfect position. Once I was happy with it, I cleaned my stamp and got my Versamark ink. I used a lot of anti-static powder and stamped that twice. And then I was very careful with when I put my embossing powder on to not get it anywhere um, in my pull tab or anything like that. And then I heat set it off camera because it was a little nerve wracking, but it turned out just fine. 
Last, I'm going to pop this up on a card base, and there we have our cute little pull tab. I also had to finish it off with some bling. This is the Sparkling Mint Sequin Mix from Possum, and it matched this background perfectly. So I had to use a few of those to finish off the card. And there we have the final card. You'll have to let me know if you like it down below. As always, we appreciate the time that you spend here with us. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in another video. Bye!